Good evening viewers, welcome to today's episode on the effects of air pollution. So uh, recently many of you must have uh, faced great difficulties especially in northern part of India and the entire country in general uh, due to air pollution. Now uh, I will be joined by Kanwal Deep Singh Ojla of uh, Erudite Nutrition and today we will basically not be discussing so much about the root causes of air pollution but rather uh, let me just see hopefully he should be able to see this so we will be discussing not so much the root causes of air pollution which you all possibly must be reading about in the news but rather what kind of dietary interventions especially will help you minimize uh, the damage and let's say if you are suffering from um, some type of uh, lung disease or um, pulmonary disease how to manage these risks and what steps can be taken in future to uh, mitigate these risks so we'll just be waiting for Kanwaldeep right now So I can see Kanwaldeep is online and he should be joining us shortly. Hi Kanwaldeep, if you can see this video, uh, please join in. I have uh, sent you. Okay, oh, we have Deep from Erudite Nutrition. He's in the northern part of the country, so he must have been suffocated by now from the air pollution. <laughs> Just give me a second. Just give yes, me a second. Sir. So Kanwaldeep, in today's uh, um, uh, live session, I was just mentioning to our, our viewers that we will not so much be discussing about the root causes of pollution, which most people uh, are quite familiar with based on the media reports. Uh, what we will be discussing is what kind of dietary interventions and perhaps lifestyle changes that can be done to mitigate these risks. And in case of, let's say, somebody suffering from... Uh, some type of lung disease like bronchitis or asthma, what can be done to minimize their damage and what are the severe risks of air pollution that we do not know of? So, uh, first of all, uh, welcome everybody who is watching the video, who will be watching it later. And uh, thank you, uh, Prati, for, you know, making this uh, idea come up. And... Uh, as for now, uh, why, when you introduced me, <laughs> I am actually suffocated it a little bit. And even now it is raining a little bit. And finally, there was a sight of sky after so many days. So today, today in the afternoon, I could see some clouds. I could see the sun finally after about uh, eight or nine days. So ever since post Diwali, the whole... Uh, environment has been so much polluted and the Diwali is not the only reason for that change in temperature as well mm -hmm. and uh, the burning of uh, paddy straw in the in the fields also that is also a very big uh, issue especially in the northern part of the country but so, the industrial effluents are also there i think they are also one yeah of the they, they are yeah the, ind the industrial uh, pollution and the transportation and uh, Everything, they, these things are that are available throughout the year. Yes. They keep on going. But why, why this particular time every year, why do we, you know, experience these type of things? Because uh, the biggest factor that highlights, okay, which is not the contributor, but which is the highlight, that is Diwali, as well as the burning of paddy straw. Yeah. 
so these are the two things that do not happen throughout the year exactly rest of the wise the pollution is you know happening every day the pollution is being you know uh, spread out every day by the industries and by everything so i have also seen an increased number of uh, patients at our hospital mm-hmm. which are dealing with breathing issues most of them because uh, where i work uh, it is a super specialty hospital but uh, the majority of the patients that we see they are uh, related uh, their their diseases related to cardiovascular diseases and yes they are the ones who suffer due to uh, breathing issues yeah and uh, the second is the spread of dengue in mm-hmm. this particular season and along with dengue comes the other uh, types of flus and uh, fevers and jaundice and all these sort of problems along with a lot of people who are suffocated who are unable to breathe and a lot of allergies so this is this is the whole you know a, a pack of diseases which are uh, in a majority number post diwali so it's interesting that you mentioned cardiovascular diseases because that is one of my personal interest areas and i guess it's yours also one interesting thing i noticed about cardiovascular diseases and air pollution is not only air pollution a contributing factor for the increased uh, risk of all types of cardiovascular diseases hypertension stroke heart disease right. but air pollution for those who have existing conditions like let's say somebody who has atherosclerosis uh, right. that person is at extremely high risk due to air pollution because what happens is these particulate matters once they enter uh um, the the blood vessels and uh, where the plaque has built up the, they, right. there are two mechanisms one is they cause the plaque uh, build up due to an autoimmune response and the other one is if somebody already has a plaque build up they tend to rap- rupture that plaque so it is right. not only a, a causal factor but if you have a uh, heart disease or if you have Uh, a history right. of heart disease it is an extremely uh, increased risk factor like uh, your chances of something bad happening from that increases yeah they 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 do increase they do increase so uh, see there are two two ty- types of uh, you know approaches that we would like to discuss here the first one is dietary approach see that's where uh, we come in play the second is lifestyle change so which one should we discuss first should we discuss we'll the dietary go for the dietary first? intervention first all right so uh, for the viewers over here during the time of high pollution and uh, already some of the states are at high alert due to pollution factors the biggest thing that is going to happen to our body is that we are going to inhale a lot of smoke smog and mist all yeah. combined together yes so irrelevant of the source from where the pollution is actually coming it doesn't matter because we live in a common air so we are going to breathe it it is going to we are going to inhale so many particles which actually create an oxidative stress in our body yep the biggest contributor will be carbon dioxide and carbon uh, monoxide apart from the other heavy metals and uh, chemicals that are you know suspended in the air but these carbon dioxide and monoxide they basically drop the saturation level of your blood the saturation of oxygen in your, in your blood so this is where people start having panic attacks and asthma attacks and people who are suffering from cardiovascular diseases basically you know Uh, their heart starts palpitating and they do not they they can't breathe actually they try to breathe more air they try to you know expand their lungs and their diaphragm as much as possible but the only thing that they are getting is polluted air yes so their saturation keeps on falling down mm-hmm. so for this oxidative stress that is been generated due to the pollution the best thing that we can do is have some antioxidant rich food yes so we can start with having some good amount of vitamin c at first of all the vitamin c is the best uh, antioxidant 
and we need to replenish our body with vitamin C daily. And it is a common trait in smokers and people who <coughs> consume alcohol regularly that in general they have a low level of vitamin C. It has been observed because uh, smoking as well as uh, the use of alcohol, it depletes our vitamin level. So not only when we are talking about an active smoker, the passive smoker or the type of smoking that we guys are doing, living in the environment that is not fit enough. So basically this oxidative stress will lower down the amount of vitamins and uh, other uh, oxygen content of our body. So we need to replenish that. So, so the best C, sources you, for... You mentioned vitamin C. That's an interesting point. Because that's a uh, water-soluble vitamin, obviously. Right. Uh, in addition right. to that, vitamin E has been found to play a major role in reducing the stress on the respiratory system and also right. to prevent infections. So you mentioned that one of the factors that we are suffering from is the drop in uh, oxygen levels. But another factor is due to all these viruses and bacteria, you have a tendency to develop infection. And at that point right. of time, people often go for uh, antibiotics. So infections are one of the reasons for uh, the asthma attacks when people have mucus building right. up in their uh, uh, lungs. So in, in that case, vitamin E is equally important, not uh, diminishing any right, right. vitamin C. Vitamin E would be equally important in that case. Yeah, I'm, I'm, th that was actually the next uh, vitamin that I was going to discuss. So, okay, okay, you can discuss the vitamins, no problem. Yeah, I was, I was going, I was going for one, one at a time. Okay, okay, so, you go ahead. So the, the the source of vitamin D, we vitamin C, we are getting uh, some good amount amount of vitamin C from citrus fruits and uh, lemon, and uh, almost many of the vegetables and fruits. Okay, so these are our primary sources of uh, vitamin C. As you already mentioned, the next most important vitamin E, it, it, that is vitamin E. Okay, so that helps, you know, uh, vitamin E is a fat soluble vitamin. So whenever the thing comes with fat soluble vitamins, I want our viewers to concentrate upon the organs of our body. Yeah. Because, because the most important organ of our body, that is brain, it is made up of fat. So whenever it comes to fat soluble vitamins, you should always focus on the organ mm -hmm. because it is going to have a direct impact when when your fat soluble vitamins are low uh, your organ health will deteriorate and when you have good vitamin e when you intake good vitamin e and then it will also help your with your eyes uh, with your uh, uh, the repair and regeneration of damaged cells of your eyes and of your brain and as well as of your immune system. Okay. So with the combination of vitamin uh, vitamin E and vitamin C, along with vitamin A also, overall overall in, in a package, we talk about almost all the vitamins and minerals. So all of them are important, but the most important one are vitamin C and vitamin E. So with this combination, basically, uh, you can build up your immunity Okay, and also nourish your body and release a lot of oxidative stress that is, you know, uh, which which your body and your every cell of your body is suffering. So, Kanwaldeep, I would say that it would be better if you can uh, complete the oxidative stress part with the vitamins and minerals, and I'll take over the anti-inflammation part with the essential fatty acids. Yeah, yeah you can, you can. Uh, the, uh, the good sources of vitamin E will be some healthy fats, obviously. Mm -hmm. So some olive oil and you can also add some desi ghee. So the oxidative stress, see, it works in this way. Uh, basically, we have to understand what is oxidation. All right, I'll, I'll don't, I won't take too long for that. Uh, when an iron comes in contact with water, in the presence of oxygen, it gets rust. Okay, so we call it oxidation. A similar type, not the exact one, but a similar type of oxidative effect is also happening on our body when we take something uh, like alcohol or smoke or the environmental pollution. So what it does is basically uh, our cells of the body get oxidized. It 
decreases the efficiency of the cells it damages the dna okay and it also disrupt the normal bio functioning of your cells so when your cells aren't performing well your overall organ tissues and you know your whole body is not going to perform well so what an antioxidant basically does is the antioxidant uh, like for example you can take green tea right if you if you are having a cup of green tea basically what happens is all the polyphenols and the antioxidants and the tannins that you are drinking when they will be absorbed into your blood stream uh, what they basically do is there is an electron exchange happening so they stop the functioning of these oxidative stress markers and they release free radicals into our blood stream so we are not only stopping the damage that is going to happen because of the oxidative stress but we are reversing it we are trying to repair by the help of uh, these free radicals and uh, antioxidant particles okay and what about the role of trace minerals in uh, reducing the oxidative stress so people usually say Which that is, sorry trace minerals like magnesium selenium, uh, selenium yeah. copper zinc these uh, definitely have an effect in reducing the oxidative stress so what would you recommend in terms of dietary interventions to ensure uh, that trace minerals are sufficient in the body and are there some uh, sources which are uh, rich in a combination of all for example let's take mutton liver for example they have a good combination right. of folates and minerals so besides that what are the other food sources where we can get a good when whenever it comes to you know fulfillment of trace minerals my always uh, my favorite go to snack is about nuts and seed okay so we get almonds and we have cashews pistachios walnuts almost all types of nuts mm -hmm. then we've got sesame seeds and flax seeds and chia seeds these are all common foods that we already have in our kitchen mm -hmm. so we only need to you know just have that uh, thing incorporated into our diet so nuts and seeds uh, no the, these nuts and seeds are about 50 to 60% of healthy fats also and vitamin e also and omega 3 also so all these combined if if i act right now if we do not even talk about the benefit of uh, we will discuss it in the later the benefit of uh, healthy fats and omega 3 seeds in general are one of the best sources of Uh, completing our uh, micronutritional uh, you know profile okay so seeds and uh, nuts are the best things to go along along with the eggs if you can have some uh, desi eggs that is also a good option but uh, for vegetarians also if we talk nuts and seeds are the best source of your micro minerals Uh, so one of the things that i have uh, experienced uh, personally and also during uh, treating a few clients is that uh, addressing the problem of inflammation is extremely important during the phase of uh, respiratory stress so right. at this point of time it is very essential um, especially for uh, women who are pregnant and who have younger babies to ensure that uh, essential fatty acids are uh, consumed in the diet in sufficient amount by essential fatty acids we mean omega 3 uh, omega 6 is actually anti uh, is actually inflammatory and you would want to consume less of uh, seed oils during this period of time so the oils that you would uh, cook in are typically coconut oil uh, olive oil ghee uh, mutton fat or if you are meat eater you can go for those options and those who are vegetarian also they should seriously con uh, consider fish oil capsules because i have many people who are not willing to eat uh, fish and meat and eggs but they are willing to consume fish oil capsules so fish oil capsules are a very simple and easy way to ensure not only your essential fatty acids are uh met but also during this period when uh, your body is inflamed like this uh, sufficient inflammation in your body your uh, epithelial cells are like put under the minimum stress and by epithelial cells i mean the cells under your uh, inner lining of the blood vessels right so these cells should be under minimum stress uh, um, uh, during 
this period. So I would say that uh, inflammation and oxidative stress are the two major things that you can address through dietary interventions. Um, what else do you recommend uh, people do in terms of diet? Like, um, I, do you want to talk a little bit about why these interventions will help you and under what situation these interventions will help you? Like, there are two, the, here there are two aspects. One, somebody who wants to prevent, right? Who, who doesn't want to fall sick. And what if somebody's right. already sick? What does that kind of person do? So if, if you are sick, if you have an asthma <clears throat> attack, what can you do? What are the steps that you can take? Right. So uh, I, I would like to, you know, add one point, uh, what you yeah. just said about uh, oils. So th that is an excellent point. So we have to avoid all the refined and uh, grain and seed oil. Yes. And uh, uh, the omega-3 is anti-inflammatory and omega-6 is inflammatory inflammatory with an with an exception that uh, olive oil has some good amount of omega-6 into it yeah but the exception here is that olive oil is the only omega-6 oil that is going to have an anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. so that is a that is a positive thing for us actually yeah i mean you uh, won't have no, a pure profile in any uh, place like for example people say that olive oil is uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids it has saturated fatty acids too so that is a little bit uh, misleading advertising which uh, yeah. people resort to right so uh, one two two another things that just came into my mind right now when you were asking about that uh, multi minerals and micro minerals yeah. Uh, the two other things that we can do in our diet apart from nuts and seed is that you can use Himalayan rock salt or sea salt for it. Okay. So sea salt is not that popular in our country, but Himalayan pink salt is, you know, quite a bit popular. That is quite popular. Known as rock salt. Yeah, the the brand. Yes. Uh, I use a, uh, I use a brand. It is called Puro. P-U-R-O. Yeah. So I think it is, it is maybe 80 to 90 rupees per kg. Uh, but it is a very fine quality of uh, pink salt. So when you when you consume pink Himalayan salt, that is also enriched in about 80 plus uh, of micro minerals into it. So that is also a good source. Uh, one another exciting thing that I just read about last week that was uh, we've all heard about shilajit. Okay, so whenever we uh, we talk about shilajit, the first ever things that come into our mind is uh, the the sexual power yes that in, it increases the libido it increases the sexual power of a male so I was thinking that no this this cannot be the only advantage that uh, Shilajit is going to have so let's dig in something more and uh, I found out that it also has about 80 to 85 plus vitamins and minerals combined okay in, in Shilaji. So like it is, it, it is not only a, a remedy for having a, you know, increased uh, sexual power, but it is also basically a very good uh, thing to consume uh, as uh, the, the only people who have to, you know, refrain themselves is the people who are suffering from high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or someone who has an issue with you cannot, you know, uh, because it has a thermic effect on the body. So people who cannot uh, tolerate the thermic effect of the body, they cannot, they can exclude to that. But rest of the people, now I have, I have just ordered mine. I, I've never had, uh, I never tried Shilajit in my life. So I, I finally thought, let's give it a try. Uh, because I want to try this product and compare it with the anti-inflammatory effects. And the joint health mm -hmm. of a person. Okay. Now, I, as you know, I am already suffering from a bad knee. Mm -hmm. So the benefit of having a bad fish knee. Fish oil. This is in addition to fish oil. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the actually benefit of having, having a bad knee is that I am very susceptible to inflammation. Yes. The moment I keep off from my diet, I fall off from my diet, I instantly start realizing that I am having an inflammatory response now in my body. And as soon as, you know, I come back to my diet, I feel all that inflammation. Is gone. So I will be trying Shilajit also. So apart from that, to improve the micro mineral 
profile of your body shilajit can also be used now it uh, the weather is cold so it is pretty much tolerable for majority of the people also now coming up to proper diet so these were add on now coming up to proper diet uh the best source someone who is already sick or has suffered from a of a viral or a fever or an asthmatic attack uh something that you have to do is you have to take regular steam yeah you have to use a nebulizer or anyhow you can you know use a steam room or something like that whatever is available to you so with steaming what you are doing is basically with all the pollution and smoke the mucosa lining of your lungs it becomes uh, you know sticky that is what causes the coughing of uh, of a person who is suffering from an asthma attack or someone who is not able to breathe so that even the smoker's cough also someone who's trying to quit smoking he will always have a cough the cough is because of uh, the smoke affecting and thickening your mucus, mucus in your in your lungs so having regular steam will actually relax and it will ease the pressure on your lungs and it will also have a positive effect in you know neutralizing and uh, you know uh, making the mucosa more flexible yes the second thing you can do is uh, that is chicken soup and mutton soup if you are a non vegetarian so if you are a vegetarian the best thing for you is a spinach soup or tomatoes you can add some tomatoes also that is also a really good option you can add some mushrooms into it yeah mushrooms have a very good mineral profile and uh, apart and from that, mushrooms are almost hidden too yeah so all almost all all the vegetables that we are having when we when we consume that in a form of a soup or in in in, in the form of a broth uh, it is more uh, you know nutritious rather than cooking up in form of a tadka sabzi because mm-hmm. while that cooking process we lose a lot of uh, vitamins but because the soup making process we do not expose these vegetables to a certain high degree of temperature so we get a lot of vitamins and minerals intact so if you are a vegetarian you should be having uh, at least one serving one to two servings of uh, vegetable soup if you are a non vegetarian go for chicken soup or go for mutton soup. mutton leg soup especially is uh, yeah mutton leg soup yeah very good because you are uh, extracting all the minerals and the collagen that is hidden in the right um, bones and that they really have an anti inflammatory property but uh, yeah, yeah they, thing, they also yeah go ahead they, they, they also reduce they also reduce the inflammation it is also one of the best sources of uh, collagen as, as well as well as trace minerals yeah so uh, one pro tip that i would like to give to our viewers when you are preparing any uh, bone based broth whether it is chicken bones or mutton bones or any other meat that you use add a, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar it helps extract yeah. the minerals a little bit right. better you will notice a considerable difference in the amount of uh, fat and collagen that has been extracted out of the bones right 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 that is a good thing i i recently i i recently made a bone broth first i made a bone broth without the uh, acv mm-hmm. and the next time and the second time i tried with the acv so even it had some uh, you know some citrus punch into the flavor so that was also it was not only tasty better tasting yeah. but it also had uh, you know better amount of minerals that have been extracted due, due to the uh, lower ph properties of uh, acetic acid and vinegar actually if you store it in the fridge you will get to see the collagen effect the next day especially when you use the acv it will no longer remain liquid it's like a thick gelatinous substance it becomes yeah, overnight it so that yes, should give you a very good much. indication of the amount of collagen that gets extracted by acv i mean right. you can try the process right. in acv anyway is good for you uh the other right. thing uh, which i have personally found uh, very um, useful apart from steam inhalation is the practice of pranayama so pranayama is uh, essentially 
a variety of breathing techniques what is, what it is doing is like kanwaldeep said that uh, uh, there is a problem of oxygen entering into our lungs right so uh, this is actually more of a preventive uh, step rather than um, an actual uh, remedial step when you are sick so this needs to be done uh, perhaps like 5 to 10 or even a month before uh, this diwali period so that your immunity right. slowly builds up and your lung uh, respiratory function starts going up pranayama has uh, like it is scientifically proven to increase your respiratory function so uh, it will be a good idea you can go to youtube and there are a number of videos on pranayama different types of pranayama like kapalbhati is there anulom vilom is there vastrika is there different types right. of pranayama are there you can practice them they are essentially just breathing exercises in uh, breathing mostly technique. sitting posture so it is uh, it can be done by people of all fitness levels it is not something that you just need to be fit or uh, need to have a healthy body like yoga yes. anyone can do it yeah you you don't you don't need a proper you don't need a separate room for that you don't, you need, don't need a separate timing for that yeah so it can be done anywhere any place any time just it needs to be so, done in empty stomach that's all yeah so you can uh, uh, look up youtube videos uh, and uh, in the rebel page also we had posted some information on pranayama you can uh go through our previous right. post you'll definitely find some information that definitely helps because it is improving your respiratory function in the end the less constricted your bronchioles and the air passageways are the better chance you will uh, have at fighting the diseases but then still after doing all these things you can maybe minimize there are two aspects one is the allergic aspect right. the other one is the infection right. aspect the infection aspect is not much that can be done to minimize it once you have an infection i think most people will have to go for an antibiotics what do you say kanwal ji right that that's that's what something i don't do but mm-hmm. it is something that i cannot recommend to everyone yeah it is kind of a tricky because uh, see what that what antibiotics wipe will out do it bacteria that yeah. is very bad so they, they will they will not only kill the virus and the harmful bacteria but they will also kill off your good bacteria, good bacteria in your gut and it will take some time for your digestion to come back in form after a course of antibiotic and uh, i'll i'll tell you what happened last week last week i got sick myself still my voice is uh, not not at the level it's not my natural voice so uh, it started from a throat pain Mm-hmm. i usually start having you know throat pains in this uh, time of the period post diwali and this all uh, paddy straw burning period so this time was also the same but one mistake that i did is i drank something that was very chilled okay so the effect combined so that was the mistake that i did the next morning i started having this throat pain and by the evening i started having this sinus congestion and headaches so i i knew that something is you know not going well and all these symptoms of common cold and flu are you know showing in me mm-hmm. so i tried to avoid uh, any medicines for the for, it was friday night so i tried to avoid everything friday night saturday morning was you know it was so worse i had to uh, work because i took a off day before from my work so it was double the amount of work i had to attend a wedding of my friend it was all that exertion and during the night uh my body temperature started rising i i got fever also uh-huh. like the sinus congestion and the headache wasn't enough so i got fever also so in fever what my recommendation to everyone is whenever you start experiencing fever i know in in a situation of fever you do not wish to eat anything okay you do not feel hungry uh you don't want to eat anything but i recommend the opposite whenever you experience that you are going to have a fever or you are in a fever situation go for the heaviest meals that you have ever had go for egg go for some homemade non veg food or have some pulse or lentil soup anything like that so what i did was i i ate i ate egg i had a uh, considerable amount of desi ghee added into those eggs 
uh, I followed it up even though I was not hungry and the eggs were not even digested properly. After an interval of two hours, I had some fish. And later on, I summed up the day with uh, a glass of hot milk. After two, three hours, I, I drank a glass full of milk along with all the herbs. Good evening, viewers. We apologize for the um, sudden crash in system. I'm not sure we have lost communication with Kanwal Deep and uh, just waiting for him to get back. Let me just check if he's able to view this. So we are trying to get Kanwaldi back. We apologize. Yes. For... Uh, so there was, was a, a technological, technological crash, I believe. So we apologize yeah. to our viewers for that. Uh, we will combine both these sessions later on. But now, yeah. for now, let us uh, go ahead and uh, start the part two um, of this video, which is uh, like we were talking about the various dietary. Uh, aspects let us just quickly summarize them you had mentioned about dairy i have an interesting observation personally for me dairy causes a lot of mucus buildup so i avoid yeah. dairy whenever there is uh, a period of respiratory stress so right. i have had very good results avoiding grains and dairy because those two are the major inflammatory sources for me now this this varies a lot because if you go to the american uh, clinical nutritional practices they will recommend the mediterranean diet a lot which involves grains whole grains especially uh, so it varies a lot you have to kind of see what is triggering an allergic response because an allergy right. varies from person to person but anyway right. kanwal deep let us move on to uh, the second part the lifestyle changes that can be done for this uh, give, give me give me a second give me a second मैं करता बस या माँ माय नेफ्यू वाज आस्किंग मी समथिंग रिलेट अटॉक्ट या तो व्हाट व्हाट वर वी व्हाट वर यू सेइंग या द लाइफस्टाइल चेंजेस वी आर सपोज्ड टू डिस्कस द लाइफस्टाइल चेंजेस व्हिच वी आर कैन डू या इन ऑर्डर टू या सो बिफोर द बिफोर द एक्चुअली थिंग टर्न्ड ऑफ आई आई जस्ट वांट you are feeling weak or you have a cold or a fever go for a heavy meal so have some yeah. eggs have some chickens have some desi ghee and uh, like as you said about the milk yes the milk is actually you know it increases your secretion uh, but not uh, you can somewhere neutralize the effect when you add some spices into it. okay yeah so not it would it will not completely go away but you can somewhere neutralize because when it comes to spices i always recommend the people uh, we have some patients who are having a bad chest okay they cannot breathe properly or maybe they are on a ventilator or somewhere so when we shift them or when we discharge them so i always recommend that uh, what you have to do is you boil 2 liters of water and uh, you can add some green cardamom and some black cardamom and uh, some some soft into it what was soft fennel yeah. you can add some fennel fennel, fen uh, fennel into it so okay. with the combined effect of these three spices basically so even if you are having a normal uh, copd issue or an asthmatic issue or you are having a lot of congestion issues even for tb i ask my patients to have this water the next day boil it in the night time keep it outside on the shelf and next morning whatever form of water you are going to intake it should be this water nice. and if you are going to make if you are going to make oats make it from this water if you are going to make a dal soup go make for this water 
if you're going to even cook your vegetables use this water mm -hmm. so a water which has been boiled with green cardamom black cardamom and fennel it is excellent to clear out your lung okay so you can try it maybe next time if you ever feel like uh, you are having yeah, some sort of try you know? tonight <laughs> it's anyway going to be happy for next week right so yeah and even if the, the water becomes you know that the flavor is good it's easily mm. drinkable it's very likable flavor and it has a lot of benefits now what i've experienced is sometimes the, the all the secretions they you know they just go away sometimes for a day or two you might increase your the, the coughing might increase mm -hmm. but you will you will certainly notice a difference a lot of mucus is coming out of your lungs and you have to spit it out again and again okay so what it does is rather than you know when your your chest is congested that's better taking uh, than taking a bronchodilator like aspirin or ambrodil something like yes that. exactly so what it does is basically it loses up that all the the Blend. mucus and and it comes out when you cough so even if you cough more it's also beneficial so it will happen for a day or two but at the end of the the course you are going to have a easy and a free breathing path okay so apart from that when we talk about lifestyle uh, changes apart from diet then uh, i would like to suggest people to first of all stop or avoid having a morning walk or a morning jog <coughs> don't step out of the house without a pollution mask they cost maximum 100 to 150 rupees get a pollution mask <laughs> please okay right. even if the air quality is 170 150 uh, there is a, you, you don't run any risk whatsoever with a pollution mask so a pollution mask is a very good preventative so yeah the mask is one of the most handy options you know it is easily available you can get it from your local stores or uh, if you want something that that is being graded so these masks come in into actually three grades it is r n and p these are okay. the three different types of ratings so the rating will denote that uh, what type of particles or what type of chemicals or the oil based chemicals that this mask can remove mm -hmm. so you can have a look into that and uh, then you can order it online also it is pretty cheap it doesn't cost much uh, the second thing that uh, maybe we can do is like <coughs> sorry like what happened yesterday was i was coming from my friend's house while it was raining so mm. since these are the first rains after this all pollution mess mm. so try to avoid as much as contact with the rain as you can contact yeah yeah so like last night Uh, it took me three or four minutes, maybe for three or four minutes, I was in the rain. And the first thing that I did was, I came into the house bag and I had a shower. It's basically acid rain, nothing else. Right. So it was. It was late in the night. I didn't had an option to stop. I was on a two wheeler. So mm -hmm. for three four minutes, I had a exposure. But the first thing that I did was, I came to the home and I just uh, had a had a nice shower. That. So this is one thing that uh, you guys can do. uh we've talked about the nebulizer you can use steam and nebulizer uh, regularly steam is it doesn't very have good. any harmful effects also you can add a little bit lungs. of the carvol uh, drops or eucalyptus drops right. they help open up your nasal passage and right. when uh, kanmaldeep mentioned about taking a shower suddenly it occurred to my mind every time you come back from outside you have an exposure outside just wash off your face when you come home right not Really right. with face wash, you can just wash it off with water. Uh, it removes a lot of the bacteria and germs sitting on the uh, surface, right. which you have caught while you are outside. Because you cannot avoid going out; you have to go out, right? No matter what. So, uh, so these are very small one, tips. One thing, can, yeah. One thing I I want to ask you something, uh, Pratik Bhai. What what are your views on air purifier? Air purifier, uh, I don't know. uh i am not convinced that uh, air purifiers will give you the result that you want uh mostly it is marketing because these right. are not clinically yet recommended right right so uh 
these are based on the number of uh, sketchy trials which uh, have not passed through very uh, serious scrutiny but from my understanding air purifiers are something that you may go for but probably it won't give you any benefit it is like one of those cases in which it's like a placebo drug that is my right. opinion uh, what do you think of it uh See, as you've already said, like I, I feel somewhat the same. There are no benefits, and I won't recommend anybody to have uh, air purifiers. But if you do have air purifiers, like uh, don't don't feel disheartened that you've spent this money, and it's it's not like that. So we can say, like for example, we are sitting in a room with an air purifier. So, like for four or six or eight or ten hours in a day, maybe. Mm -hmm. let's say you are breathing somewhat the air which is, which is somewhat better than what you would have been breathing out it will be a very marginal effect marginal but, yeah yeah you you should not see if you have an air purifier keep it but don't yeah. expect it to do some kind of magical wonder right, right? Exactly, uh, exactly. you cannot uh, get yourself exposed to like he said acid rain and then dust right. and smoke not wear the pollution mask and then think that oh i had an air purifier why did i still fall sick you should not have that attitude so even even if you are spending like 12 hours of your uh, of your day in your home or in your office or in somewhere you know in any case still you are moving from point a to point b so there is a high chance that you will come in contact and uh, i i think the air purifiers staying indoors with an air purifier for a longer period will somewhere you know impair your efficiency of your immune system to fight with all these bacteria and diseases it will have that negative effect that is for sure but uh, do you think air purifier will help you in terms of allergen exposure that is if Probably. someone does not someone does not come out of the air, air purified room for 24/7 maybe maybe in his case yeah but that would be like a very rare case like let's say you have an air purifier in your home and immediately you are getting into a car <coughs> but i would warn you even in the car the air condition system usually in the air condition system there's a lot of bacteria and uh, germs that yeah accumulate so yeah, don't get your if you get outside the house and in into the car and then you think why you have fallen uh, fallen sick because remember there are uh, if it's your self driven car that's fine but if you're sharing with other passengers the air right. they breathe out all these things get accumulated and it keeps recycling within the car so right. air purifier uh, not 100% convinced but at the same time cannot be ruled out uh, if you have it it's great but just don't expect a magic uh, pill yeah. right yeah. it will give you a like like an edge you know a slight edge but uh, it won't be any significant no uh, what is your opinion about taking uh, steam baths steam baths are a good thing See, we've already suggested to have some steam or uh, a nebulizer something like that mm -hmm. so a steam bath is a good option basically so it it will not only <clears throat> open up your pores of your skin but you have to follow it up with something clean by that i mean is that for example you are having suppose you have a steam bath in your gym and you are going to use it first of all a wet steam bath if the temperature is not high enough it can be a center to you know spread this um, communicable disease if the temperature is not high enough if the place is not hygienic enough All okay right. because we because have ryanul joining us from bangladesh he has wished us welcome welcome ryanul i hope the tips that we share with you uh, do help you in this uh, winter season full of pollution and you can incorporate that uh, before we sign off one very important uh, aspect that uh, we have probably missed is when you have these kind of attacks intermittent fasting uh, even though the research is at a very preliminary stage personally i can say it works uh, right. clinical trials are underway in the national institute of health uh, in us uh, intermittent fasting does help uh, reduce right. inflammation and reduce the stress on your lungs 
and um, i was reading a pretty old yoga book written somewhere in 80s and even they had mentioned that a 24 hour fast helps but just that the procedure was wrong because in their fasting they all, always had like you can eat uh, light in the night but that is as we know that is not really right. fasting so uh, whenever you do a fast it should be water fast with maybe a cup of a cup of or two of green tea black tea or black coffee but nothing more than that nothing that should uh, spike your insulin right so yes fasting will uh, certainly help it will build up your immunity plus it will help your body uh, to you know to uh, yeah regenerate and also one more thing when when your body is in the phase of intermittent fasting mm mm-hmm. by the way of urine or by the way of sweat or somewhere the the demand of your body for vitamins and antioxidants it decreases basically mm-hmm. the demand decreases so yeah even by having a little amount of vitamins so you will be replenishing a lot for your body because now yeah. the normal rda won't count but the only one situation where i won't suggest someone to do intermittent fasting in this season if they are having uh, a grade fever if they are suffering from fever and so that is where i won't medication there in there is no chance that you will be able to do intermittent fasting right. but medication is in your choice as nutritionist we cannot interfere with the medical practice right, we can right. only give you nutritional advice right so medication is between you and your uh, physician so any good right. nutritionist does not interfere with that but the uh, tips we give help you reduce your dependency on medication right uh, so to so, summarize uh, today we discussed uh, the effects of uh, pollution on cardiovascular diseases especially how air pollution not only causes uh, cardiovascular diseases but cardiovascular. is also especially dangerous for those who have cardiovascular diseases have cardiovascular. uh then we discussed uh, what are the best dietary practices which include uh, um, reducing the oxidative stress and reducing the inflammatory effects we also uh, touched upon the concept of intermittent fasting and how intermittent fasting can help when uh, you have a um, stress on when you have stress on your lungs and right. besides that we discussed a few uh, uh, tips such as uh, using pollution masks steam inhalation steam baths right. uh, washing yourself uh, after an exposure uh, to acid rain and uh, minimizing your exposure as much as you can and we also discussed the efficiency of air purifiers so in uh, so to summarize in this session we have not gone that much into the depth of uh, why pollution is caused but rather how you can manage it better you, and if yeah. you want uh, if you are suffering uh, feel free to uh, drop a message to uh, kanwaldeep or drop a message to me we yeah. are always there to help you and uh, our pages are there our you can reach us directly via facebook or drop us an email whichever way or leave a comment here uh, follow his page erudite nutrition follow my page rebel health and fitness and uh, kanwaldeep would like to so give some post closing one uh, one one last uh, remark that i want to make is that as we've already discussed uh, the both type of cardamoms and fennels please guys do try this okay so it is going to you will obviously feel the difference in a day or two okay these are so potent and so powerful spices so this this has everybody to be used warm or can it be consumed at room temperature you can you can literally consume it in a warm form like for example what i did is i i made some the day earlier and the okay. next morning i reheated it and added some green tea into it okay so you can so use you that what sorry how long do you boil it I I do not boil it for too long I add all these spices all the three spices right in the beginning mm-hmm. as the water starts bubbling I uh, shut down the gas and I just you know cover it and keep it on the side you okay. don't have to boil it for too long but we will keep that water aside and we will not remove the spices until the next morning okay 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 understood understood and the next morning we are going to use that water for cooking and drinking and making your teas or anything Mm-hmm. so please guys do try it and uh, give give us a feedback of uh, uh, how do you like this remedy of ours 
Yeah, that is uh, one thing I'm going to try tonight and uh, I can trust Kanvaldeep on this. So I would recommend everybody, uh, you can try this water. It just has black cardamom, green cardamom and fennel seeds. So just boil the water and keep it overnight and then consume it the next day. You can heat it up the next day or have it at room temperature. So this was certainly a very good session. In uh, future, right. probably me and Kanwaldeep will try to discuss uh, on other topics. Probably we'll be trying to touch on malnutrition. We have been on the talks to uh, discuss malnutrition, but that is quite a complicated subject. So uh, probably uh, later this month or earlier next month, we will try to bring you a right. talk on malnutrition. So, so like, should, should we... Should we add a spoiler into it? Should we give a hint of what our next session will be about? That yeah, documentary. <laughs> we can so, add a guys, in, 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 the, in the month of November, uh, on, on a particular good weekend, we'll, we'll inform you guys, uh, there is a Netflix, Netflix documentary, The Game Changers. Yes. So we will be having a good discussion on that documentary as well. So if you haven't watched it, so please do watch it and then join us for the session. And uh, we are going to discuss something about that. Sure. All right, then, uh, viewers, All right. thanks for joining us today evening uh, at such a short notice. I hope you liked our session and I hope you can incorporate some of our tips and do give us some feedback as to whether you have benefited by any of it or not. Right. All so, right. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. All right. Have take care. Take care. Take care.